Good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is John Mack. I'm Director of Public Programs here at the Chicago Council. This is our second public program of our fall series, so delighted to see such a great audience for it. I'd first like to thank Natasha Egan and her team at the Museum of Contemporary Photography. Uh, we've worked on this program for the past few months, and we're really excited that it's finally here. Programming on Asia is important to the Council, and you'll note on your printed agenda that we have two upcoming programs on the region, one on South Korea and one on ASEAN that I'd encourage you to check out. Um, members receive discounted tickets to all of these events as well as special members only opportunities. Talk to myself or any of my colleagues after the event if you'd like to learn more. Turning back to tonight, we are live streaming the panel to viewers around the world. So now would be the time to text your friends and colleagues if they couldn't make it tonight. Let them know they can watch online. Um, but after you send that text, please silence your phones. To discuss the exhibit further and to introduce our panel, please join me in welcoming to the stage Natasha Egan, the Executive Director of the Museum of Contemporary Photography. So good evening. It's nice to see such a large um, crowd here for what I know will be a very um, engaging, um, informative evening. So welcome to the Museum of Contemporary Photography at Columbia College, Chicago. We're thrilled to be partnering with the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, um, as often our uh, topics of interest um, dovetail nicely. Being an academic art museum, we make an effort to coordinate thought-provoking exhibitions that respond to our mission to promote a greater understanding and appreci appreciation of the artistic, cultural, political implications of the image of our world today. The exhibition, North Korean Perspectives, began with a conversation between independent curator Mark Probst and me at a photography festival in Montreal two years ago. Mark's interest is in the inf influential role images play on how a state represents itself, in this case, the hyper-controlled state of North Korea, and how artists and photojournalists use photography to perhaps expose in another, another angle appropriated and digitally altered images along with documentary and photojournalism, video and 3D work make up the exhibition with artists from South Korea, Japan, Europe and America. If you had not had a chance to see the full exhibit uh, earlier this evening, the exhibition will be up until the 4th of October and I encourage you to spend time with it. North Korean perspectives would not be uh, possible without the support of the Andy Warhol Foundation for Visual Arts, BMO Harris Bank, the Illinois Arts Council, and the Carpenter Foundation. And tonight's event, I would like to especially thank the cultural services at the Consulate General of France, um, Expo Chicago, which is happening this week, um, and of course the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Tonight's panel uh, will further the ideas explored in the exhibition and also take a more nuanced look at how North Korea affects um, its neighbors and the United States. You will see on the back of your program some recent data points collected by the Chicago Council regarding North Korea. It's clear that the American public takes the threat of North Korea very seriously and with stories in the news um, often uh, today <laughs> um, about renewed tensions between the North and South Korea we find ourselves in an important moment to better understand of what we have at stake. I'm delighted to introduce um, our panel, who will discuss North Korea inside and out. There are you, yes. Um, our first speaker is uh, Gi Yoon Bak. Uh, she is a fellow at the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. She has written on the opportunities for change in North Korea regime and previously worked on information access projects for North Korean defectors. Our next pan panelist is, uh, is Philippe Chansa, a photographer who interweaves the arena of art, documentary, and journalism to produce work that explores the role of imagery in today's world. Based in Paris, he has covered topics ranging from worker conditions in the Gulf states to merchandising the world's global cities. Um, after I finish, it'll be his images that are scrolling uh, behind the panel. Um, next, our speaker is Mark Probst, uh, the curator of the uh, North Korea um, Perspectives, and he is an independent photography consultant and curator based in Amsterdam. He has acted as artistic director and curator for exhibitions from France to Mexico to Nigeria, and has worked at the World Press Photo Foundation and Agency VU. He has acted... I'm sorry, uh, and tonight's conversation will be uh, moderated uh, by Carl Friedhoff, 
Uh, Carl is uh, a fellow on public opinion and foreign policy at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs and a Korea Foundation, Mansfield Foundation, Foundation US-Korea Nexus Scholar. So please, welcome, please join me in welcoming our four panelists um, and enjoy the panel. Well, thanks everyone for, for coming out. We really appreciate it. This is a great audience and I'm, I'm personally looking forward to the discussion. Uh, to open it up, I'll, I'll start off with some framing remarks and I think I'll open with, with something that I was told by one of my mentors, Jack Pritchard. Um, Jack, Ambassador Pritchard, he was the special envoy to North Korea under President Clinton and then he carried on in that role into the first couple years of the next Bush administration. And after he had left government, I remember working for him and I had gone into his office and sat down and. We were discussing North Korea kind of on one of the very first days that I worked for him. And in, in, in the process of the discussion, I remember him looking at me and, and saying that anyone who thinks that they know, what, they, they know what's happening in North Korea is either lying to you or lying to themselves. Now, I don't say that to deflate everyone's expectations for the discussion that we're about to have. If, if you were expecting us to solve all of the problems, well, you were, you were going to be disappointed sooner or later. But I bring that, bring that up because I think it, it ties two points together that I want to make to kind of frame this discussion. And the first point is that right now, we are ha I think we have unprecedented access to North Korea in terms of what is coming out. You know, if, if you look about five years ago or six years ago, this type of, of photo exhibit that we have probably could not exist. There just wasn't enough coming out at the time. Now we have photographers in there who are, are posting photos in real time through Instagram, um, we have people sneaking things out on, on their memory chips through their, their, their cameras. And so there is much better access. We, we have stories from defectors. And so in general, our knowledge of North Korea is better. However, it's still poor. And it's probably the poorest of any, any country in the world. So the data is better, but it's still very, very bad. The second point I wanted to make is, so now that we have this better data, how do we interpret it? What does it all mean? Right now, I think we have more people than ever who are, are focused on North Korea, who are working on North Korea. Um, there's a lot of work, sort of sites like NK News are, are doing really interesting things with how they do word counts. We have people tracking leadership changes. And there's a lot of thought and creative thinking going in to how we, how we look at North Korea and how we think about North Korea. But I think you know what, what Jack's point really was, uh, is that we have these these two these these more data and and you know if, if people who say they know something about North Korea you know they're lying to you or lying to themselves is that there are multiple truths in North Korea and I think that's something we'll get in into tonight um, do we have we have the, the truth that, that comes out in the data we have the truth that the government wants us to put out and the truth of how we see North Korea in the news every day you know if you are reading the news this morning North Korea announced that it has restarted its reactor at Yongbyon. It has announced that on October 10th, there or be around, it intends to launch a, a satellite, which is a cover test for an ICBM. But at the same time, we have, we have these people, and that's something that comes through very well in the photo exhibit. You see the ordinary people. And so you have these two truths of a people living in a country, living daily life, and you have the truth of North Korea in the news. And so I hope today that this is something that, that we can get into a little bit as, as the conversation progresses. So from here, I'm going to turn it over to the panelists. And the order is actually not going to be the, the way that it was announced. We're actually going to have Mark first as the curator, and then Philippe, and then Gian will follow up. Um, I'm going to all give them about five or six minutes to say their piece, and then I'm going to follow up with a single question, maybe two, depending on, on, on time. And if they go over five or six minutes, I will crack the whip as the moderator to keep them within time. <laughs> After that, we'll turn it over for a Q&A to the audience. So with that, Mark, will you, will you please kick, kick us off with your opening remarks? Thank you, thank you, and, and thanks for having me. Um, indeed, I, what, I, what I wanted to share uh, tonight is, is how I created the exhibition and why I, I, I did this exhibition. Uh, Natasha al already mentioned it somewhat, but for me, I really wanted to juxtapose the official version of North Korea to a non-official version of the state. Um, I don't pretend to know North Korea. I have never been there, uh, but I have a, a, a fascination for it. I may be slightly obsessed with it um, because of its closeness. For me, 
what I knew of North Korea when I, when I studied uh, political science, I graduated with a master's degree in, in North Korean foreign policy. And the image that I had at the time was based on the propaganda images that came out of the state. Um, North Korea uses the image, uses photography as one of its main means to communicate what it wants to look like, how it wants to represent itself. Um, and during the past couple of years, more images, as, as, as you already mentioned, called, started coming out of the country. Work by, by, by Philippe, but also, and, and namely for me, what triggered this, this idea was the Instagram account by the uh, Associated Press photographer, David Gutzenfelder, who was uh, stationed in uh, Pyongyang, where the AP opened uh, an office. And he started feeding an Instagram account live from North Korea, showing images of very ordinary things, very much daily life scenes, uh, a hairdresser, a small playground, the, the karaoke song list in a bar, the, the, the elevator, the telephone in a hotel room, these kind of objects. Um, and that started me thinking, there is this official version of how North Korea wants to portray itself. Is it possible to find in photography or through photographic means a way to go behind that vision, to, to show something else, to, to understand, to break that idea or to complement that idea and to enlarge through that those representations our understanding of the country. Um, so that's where this idea came from and I started building the idea, I, I met up with Natasha two years ago and we, we had this conversation uh, about how we can use photography to create a better understanding, to show different realities. We all hope that a photograph shows the truth. That's absolutely not the case. Um, and we can go into a large discussion about what the truth is, and we don't need to go there tonight. But North Korea wants to show us a truth of how they want to be represented. Through different versions, through different pro projects by different photographers, documentary, non-documentary, I've tried to complement this truth, to change this truth. As you may know that it's when you travel in North Korea, you will be accompanied by a state minder who will tell you what to photograph, who will tell you what you can see, what you can, what you can show. If you take a picture of a statue of one of the leaders, you're asked not to crop the image, but to take the leader in his full posture, because it would be disrespectful to only photograph the top or even the bottom half of the leader. But there are different ways to go about this, this, this mining, to go about with this, uh, um, with this person that's constantly with you. Philippe, for example, he will talk more about it. Uh, in his, not in his latest project, but in his previous project, um, which is published in a beautiful book, he follows the instructions of the miners meticulously to such a degree that for us, with a Western point of view, it becomes unheimisch, as we say in German, actually, but it becomes strange, it becomes too perfect, it becomes too beautiful, too good to be true. And through that representation of how North Korea wants to be portrayed, he reveals something of the truth that might lie behind it. Another example is the Kim Jong-il Looking at Things project. Uh, it's a Portuguese art director who may, you might have seen the project. It's a Tumblr account. It started as a Tumblr account. Now it, it was published in a small book. But it shows pictures of the dear leader, Kim Jong-il, while on his trips throughout the country um, to where he gives um, his instructions and it shows his commitment to the development. Um, and this art director took those pictures out of their original context um, and showed and, and added a small byline, Kim Jong-il looking at, and just describing what the, the man was looking at. So it would be Kim Jong-il looking at tights, Kim Jong-il looking at a computer, Kim Jong-il looking at a fish. And this repetition of official state propaganda images became funny, became ironic, and through that, it these images were able to show a truth that they initially wanted to hide. And I think every perspective that I uh, that we gathered in the exhibition, the 12 perspectives together, show a, in total a very nuanced, maybe not so obvious uh, vision of, of the state. And that was my goal for creating this exhibition. All right, thank you. Philippe, do you want to follow up? Okay, yes, thank you Matt, for this very good explanation of your, your work and the uh, and, uh, and um, this uh, marvelous exhibition about North Korea, and uh, 
yes, um, of course. Um, I have to, to talk to talk about my my work, but uh, before um, I would like to um, to to focus about uh, one of paradox of uh, what the exhibition is uh, when you spread and you discovering the, the, the images of different artists and um, the 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 concept of of, of not the concept but the the idea of that in North Korea is not possible to take pictures, you know, but uh, unfortunately the, the you, you, you can have a, a large um, different point of view of, uh, for, for, for different photographs and artists. So this is just a, a, a parenthesis. Um, for, for my own um, uh, part, for, for me, the um, the, the attraction for, 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 for the country um, start with the the, the um, long, long time ago on the on the on the eighties when I start in the on the documentary field and especially for with the photojournalist uh, I was uh, in mood with the to go and to try to discovering the, the where the, the apparently the it will be uh, difficult to go inside so and uh, for for a European uh, country and um, for me if I'm French um, I was uh, in mood and very interesting uh, well regarding regarding the 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 the, 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 um, the communist bloc uh, of Eastern country like uh, Romania, Rus uh, USSR, and also B Bulgaria. And I start to, um, uh, to, to involve some, 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 some works for assignment for, for different magazines, uh, European one and French one. And um, during this period, the, the, uh, it was very difficult to, to, uh, to obtain some, some, some information. And and some some good uh, pictures, uh, so I, I decided to 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 stop a um, few years ago, and uh, I keep a long time ago on the part of my mind the possibility to to come back on the last communist country uh, in North Korea, and but I would like to I would like to to to, to go inside the country. Uh <coughs> With we uh, are not not uh, like uh, uh, you know um, uh, clandestine. What what is the clandestinity or something like that? What is the 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 like? Uh, I would like to go to go inside North Korea um, um, as an official um, photographer. It means that. Um, I consider that the, the possibility to uh, to document the, 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 the hidden part of the of the country was just not possible. But if when you 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 explain to uh, Mark when you explain the the the, the, the possibility to 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 to, uh, to surrender the the, the 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 part of the visible uh, situation inside the country will be very interesting. And uh, will be very strong. So uh, it was a concept, and uh, this concept um, uh, uh, was for me uh, not very sure uh, during my first trip. Uh, but uh, after that, I I involved something very interesting, and. Uh, and this is the reason why you, you can have a look of this kind of images, for example, you know. Uh, I went seven times in North Korea. Um, I start on 2005, and my last travel uh, was uh, in November, uh, uh, um, no, last November of two 2014. Uh, and I saw the difference between the first period on 2005 and 2006, and and, and the second one for me uh, between uh, 2012 and at now, you know. Um, so um, the the to be inside a country uh, as a photographer or just. Uh, 
has a, a person. It's very interesting. It's 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 a really uh, it's really a, a big experience because this this is the only one country in the world uh, without any internet, uh, without any um, communication for 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 outside when you are inside, and uh, it means that the situation is very uh, unique, you know, and. Uh, and you are you are just uh, in a relationship with y yourself, you know, and uh, and uh, and this is a very good experience. Um, otherwise, uh, what I, I can to to explain to you is that um <coughs> I don't know maybe uh, what about uh, the other's possibility to to explain something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, yes, I try to to yes to to be uh, to be uh, in general, but maybe on details. Okay, what can I explain? I don't know. All right, Gian, would you like to follow up on on with, with your opening remarks? Sure, may I? Yeah. Okay, great. So my work is very different from um, from Philippe's photography work and uh, Mark's art curation work, uh, but I share an equal interest in, in North Korea. And so um, I'll just jump into it uh, in a short period of time, and I'm happy to delve into detail later in the Q&A or after when we mingle. So I think there are two contrasting aphorisms uh, that are fairly mundane, we all know them, uh, but I think particularly are relevant to North Korea. So the first one is that a picture says a thousand words. And so if you look at Philippe's work and the other photographer's work, um, there's a lot more that could be captured in a photo than a mere dis verbal description of that image. So for example, if you look at the Arirang games, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful image. It's an insane image of, the, of these mass games. But what you s as you're looking at them, you see that there are the immense resources that went into this production. The 100,000 North Koreans, if not more, spent six months out of the year uh, preparing and putting these uh, projects together. And if you look at the tiny pixels, I, I'm sure many of you know this, each tiny pixel that you, if you look really closely at the image, is a little kid holding um, colored placards, I see some nodding heads, flipping in sync to make a almost movie-like image of, of um, a movie-like narrative. And so I think that aphorism rings true. At the same time, there's a slightly contrasting one in which there's a lot more that doesn't meet the eye. And so there are three uh, less visible social phenomena that I look that I research uh, back in Boston that I'd like to briefly mention today. And I think these are quite uh, familiar topics that many of you guys are, are aware of. The first one is the phenomenon of black markets. So these the proliferation of street markets have uh, really sparked since the middle the mid 1990s uh, when the Great Famine hit. Um, an estimated 800,000 to 2.5 million people perished uh, from the effects of starvation. Uh, but with that tragedy, some people say it's the worst and best thing that happened to North Korea because it forced people to think about ways, both legal and illegal ways, to survive and fend for themselves and their families. And the effects of that, these really kind of small scale street markets that oftentimes a bunch of neighborhood housewives and just ajumais kind of put together, uh, have grown into this massive phenomenon that is now the primary source of food, goods, and information for North Koreans today. And it's so large that um, the government just cannot simply categorically shut them down. So that's, and that is now a source of all sorts of micro, social, and cultural changes happening inside North Korea that are less visibly captured in the news for our consumption. But if you dig in the in the um, in the web, you'll f you'll find some um, tidbits here and there. Second phenomenon that I personally am really interested in. I used to work at Google, so technology is something that I'm really uh, fascinated by. I, th I think we all are. Um, is as a access to illegal information. So the packet. I think we all know formally that North Korea uh, forbids access to foreign information, and technically there's no internet. Uh, we hear about the internet. A lot of the elites have their own internet, um, and now there's like. An phones legally, but um, with these with these black markets um, and both profit-driven and also just simply compassion-driven networks that comprises brokers and and 
um, some money-making businessmen and defectors and NGOs and churches, illegal in, uh, foreign information, illegal from the North Korean government standpoint, foreign information is flooding North Korea. Um, the border between North Korea and China is technically shut off, but it's more porous than ever with trade and information flowing in. And right now, uh, North Koreans inside are have more access to foreign information than ever before. Uh, and we're talking about, yes, movies and, and uh, films and things like this, but also news and e-books and encyclopedias. Uh, there are certain hearsay stories of Bibles going in. I don't know if that's true. But, uh, but the point is, very sensitive materials are going in due to demand that's uh, stemming from inside the country. And the last thing, the last um, less visible phenomenon I'd like to just to briefly mention uh, ties back to black market and foreign media, uh, which is remittances being sent back to North Korea. And so this is essentially a very common um, happenstance for people who travel to different countries and send money back. But thinking, but keeping in mind that North Korea is officially completely shut off and making an international phone call from inside North Korea could warrant uh, a fine or a a sentence to a political prison camp or, or death, and executions still do happen for illegal international phone calls. Um, this is happening. So given all those risks, um, the there have been these amazing techno like technological and human networks across South Korea, China, and inside North Korea, where a defector in South Korea can send cash, hard cash, back into North Korea into the hands of their mom or dad or some other relative within 20, 30 minutes. And I can talk more in detail. But this is a phenomenon that most defectors, there's 28,160, I think, in South Korea as of last month, who have successfully settled in South Korea. Most people do send money back. There's a 30% commission that took the broker's share, and that's getting into too much detail here. But uh, but this is a phenomenon that, that's, again, less visible, but very much um, uh, a proliferating for people inside North Korea. And it's having a lot of impact of living and also uh, people's dependence on sources other than the state. So um, I'd like to end with a quick, or I'd like to kind of leave this section with a quick anecdote that bridges the work that I do with North Korean defectors and access to information and also tonight's project, excuse me, event that emphasizes the importance of photography and visuals uh, as it pertains to the country that we're all interested in today. I was in North Korea two years ago August 2013, first and last trip I'll take for a long time, and um, and a bunch of my classmates were and I were in this northeast city. Um, I think it was a Saturday afternoon because a lot of kids were around, and so we were taking photos and kind of hanging out with our minders. We had five minders with 23 students, and so I think of the right ratio there. Um, and I thought it was clever, and I had this digital camera, nothing really fancy, nothing near what you you use, um, and. I these little girls, maybe five, six, or seven years old, were interested in me and my friends because we were all speaking English. Uh, we had like a six foot seven boy, and they thought that was amazing. And we had Korean American, and they couldn't wrap around their minds why a Korean is American. And I was like, I can't explain that to you right now. Um, and so we're like, and we're talking, and there's like, you know, and they were asking me all these questions about because we were speaking in Korean. I was the only Korean person in my group. And asked me all these questions, and I thought, okay, I have this really clever idea. Um, I'm going to give my digital camera to these little girls just for a little bit, and I show them how to click. Um, I'm not a photographer. Yeah, the shutter, the shutter, and then uh, the replay button. It's a digital camera, and these and these girls like the the replay was amazing. They could see what they just took, and um, they're really respectful. So I said, you know, go around, you know, go around and take whatever you want. Um, there are no rules. And if you want to give it back, please do. You don't have to. And so they're okay. And they ran around, and um, they were kind of keeping an eye on where I was to see when I'm leaving, so they can return it. And I had these really high hopes. I thought um, this was going to be my opportunity to gain insight into these kids' psyche of their oppressive world through camera lenses, and this is going to be amazing. Um, and so they they ran around. We're boarding the bus, so they volunteered and they gave it back. And so um, I sat in and I had this really 
big kind of expectation that was slipping through the camera, uh, the, the digital camera photo that they took. And there were um, like a couple dozen photos of this like one ant on the ground, and like a lot, like lots of photos of this one ant, and then. Um, and then there were a lot of other boys as well, like classmates, I think. They're all equally young, five, six, seven years old. And he was bent over looking at someone else's like camera. And they were taking photos of like his rear end. And they thought that was so funny. And they, there was a bunch of photos of that. And he was wearing khaki shorts. And then um, like a tall, like someone's like shoe. It was like really just poor blurry photos. And that was it. And I was so <laughs> disappointed. I had this line here I wanted to read. I was, you know, the overeager Christian activist researcher tourist in me had a lot of expe expectations beyond what I saw. And then I thought, you know, like these are kids, and um, and like they're they are they take back photos and they revel in new toys, like a digital camera, uh, by given by or loaned by this stranger, and um, they. They, yes, like they, they learn math by adding and subtracting dead American soldiers. That's how they are taught to count in math class. And, um, and playground games for boys and girls, but especially boys, are to like pretend kill Americans. Um, and like uh, this, and th these are things that happen. And um, the calendar year, as most of you know, in North Korea, the Juche year starts in 1912. That's when the calendar year starts. That's when Kim, Kim Il-sung was born. And it's a very, it's a very different world that these little kids are living in, um, and they will face constraints and punishments and injustices that you and I will never imagine to face, and, and maybe some of us have. Um, but the system is so bizarre and it's so atrocious and it's so inhumane, but it's so interesting that it's given rise to this cottage industry of news that that kind of try to capture anything that happens inside North Korea. And the most mundane things are the most sensationalized, and I guess you know, a million shares on Facebook or whatnot. Um, and for good reason, because it's so hidden. We all want to know what we don't know about. But behind the system, the, the political system, and all the research that we all do, and the photography, and the documentaries, and the books, and the celebrity defectors' memoirs, and all the controversy around those, all behind all of that are kids just like these kids I met, and millions that we won't meet. Uh, who are growing up in, yes, a very, very uh, difficult system, the most, the last authoritarian system, um, arguably, standing today. Uh, but I, it's, it's a very simple revelation that I kind of came across while looking at these awful, like, blurry photos. But I thought, I, I have to keep in mind that the people that I am so fascinated by, the country that, that comprises a country that I'm so fascinated by, um, are just really simple people. Um, and are simply just people who are living in a very different system, um, born out of nothing that they did. And so I hope that with foreign policy research and photography and art and business, I know that some of us, some of you here are businessmen and women, um, and journalism and documentaries and everything else, uh, we can understand collectively and kind of synergistically a little, this country and its people uh, a little bit better so that uh, we can kind of uh, you know, do our part in a strong interest in this country. Thank you. All right, thank you. So to, to follow up, I'm going to you know, segue into two questions. I have one one for Philippe and, and one for Mark. I'll leave uh, Gian's question for last. Um, Mark, I guess, s for, uh, following on on something that Gian said, you know, she talked about giving that, that camera to the children. And before she said that, I had actually wondered, you know, down in, in the museum or in, in the exhibition room, you have this, you know, carefully selected group of photos by professional photographers who have been working on North Korea, and, and they really have a message and something to say. But as you get increasing numbers of visitors into North Korea, there's also increasing amounts of amateur photography. And I wonder at what point that adds to our understanding of North Korea, or your understanding as, as someone who works in photography all the time, or if it's just more noise and it doesn't really add anything. So I'd like to get maybe your thoughts on that end. And Philippe, um, when you know, uh, and I think in, in Mark's opening remarks, he talked about the fact that you 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 have to be there's a state minder, someone follows you around, and you have been going to North Korea for seven you know, uh, seven trips over spread over a number yeah. of years. If you had relationships with any one person, you know, someone you saw that every time you went there, you saw them, and if you could tell us a little bit about how that relationship changed over time, 
the more you got to know them, if you could see different sides of them coming out, if first they were guarded, but just the, the, the process and the progress of that relationship. So Philippe, will, will you begin? Yes, uh, the, the process is very important with, uh, with the people of uh, uh, anywhere and uh, any country and uh, any, any trip is, is very essential. Um, especially in North Korea, the, the yeah, I, it, I think it's at this point it's very important to explain that um, w uh, anywhere you 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 are involved with something in the documentary field, for me, for myself, I consider that the the regime and uh, for example, our uh, communist country and the last one like uh, North Korea and uh, and the dynasty. Uh, Autocracy and and uh, the absolute abs absolute powership, you know. Um, you have to 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 separate the the what I spell the the human question with 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 the the policy with the with the system, you know. It's absolutely necessary because it's, it's, it's this is the only one possibility to 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 try to understand something. What 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 is expecting? What is what is doing? What is what 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 is the mystery, <laughs> especially in North Korea? You know, because uh, um, for 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 me the the, the any experience must must be a, a new step for to try to understand something. But next by uh, step by steps, uh, trick by trees, and uh, if I I, um, I I think that the the, the uh, most is the the, the the discovering of the of the country uh, uh, to and, and the, the, the spread uh, not especially especially in Pyongyang of course the the, the, the the capital but also on the other countries on the field uh, everywhere um, the, the paradox is that, that I, I consider that uh, more is the, the the knowledge of the ground more the mystery is is is, is Ah, you know, uh, it's 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 absolutely uh, unique for 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 for, for if I, I compare with the the, um, the other country, for example, when uh, I went uh, plenty time also in Emirates. Emirates, it's it's the um, I, I um, maybe it could be a little bit shocking for you, but um, the the last communist country. Uh, North Korea and uh, the new uh, ideology of the money, like Emirates, it's 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 quite similar, you know. And, uh, and but but in Emirates, the, the the possibility to to involve the system is is, is very very uh, very easy, very uh, very uh, clear, you know, very uh, very logical. But uh, but in North Korea, it's very 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 special. And uh, also the yes, your question was about the the people. You have uh, about one minute, please. Yeah, and uh, no, sorry, but it's the duration. But this is the reality of this country. You can have uh, in a relationship friendly with some people, and you during your next travel, you 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 learn that the that they don't exist anymore because the one is. Is suddenly disappear for for to, to, to go on the worker terms uh, for the, for the others uh, they, they disappear on the uh, on the on the uh, after break with the car you know it's, it's this is the the, 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 the violence of the of the system you know the, the people can disappear uh, to be killed to be uh, to be any time any way uh, for any reasons. Thank you, Mark. Do you want to answer that, that question I had on, on amateur photography and, and if it's adding just more more understanding or just more noise? Um, at a, to a certain level, I think it adds understanding um, because there are images and they, 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 they we see more. But what's interesting uh, um, is that most of the images, amateur images that we do see come out of the country are often very similar. Um, there is very little variation I found in let's say, non-professional photography, and even some professional photography that comes out of the country. Uh, if you look at Pyongyang, you always see the Great Study Hall, uh, the, the, the metro, the two metro stops, um, 
the picture of the leaders in the metro train car. I mean, it's these these iconic images that that if you and th it's what I noticed when I started to become slightly obsessed with North Korea. Uh, I, I started looking at images online and, and 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 small movies and and I realized that I always saw the same things. Um, and that's exactly why I was trying to find projects by photographers or artists that broke that standard image up a little bit. Um, what's interesting, and what you mentioned as well in your introduction, that for the, during the past five years or so, especially I think with the, the new leader coming in, there has been uh, more openness. Uh, more areas are being opened up to, uh, to tourists and to travel. So through that and through the, the how easy it has become to take pictures, of course, through digital media and, 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 and iPhones and, and whatnot. Um, we see more images coming out of different things. All in all, I don't find those images very um, informative because I think the power of photography is not to take a picture of what you see. The power of, if you want to use photography properly, you have to go inside, you have to find a connection and go beyond what you just see. Um, that's very difficult. It's very easy to take a picture. Uh, anyone can take a picture. I mean, you have a camera, you, you press the shutter, and you've got a picture. Um, <laughs> we all know how to read and write. I mean, uh, I, I, I assume it's very simple to, to, to write a letter or an email, um, to write literature, to be Philip Roth, to be Shakespeare. That's something. To use those words to go beyond the obvious, to go beyond the description, I think it works the same with photography. It's very simple to take a picture. Anybody can do it, but to tell a story to go beyond what you actually see and find a story that goes behind is very difficult, but it needs access. Um, um, and so access you can only get if you have a connection. And finding that connection and spending time is, I think, extremely difficult in North Korea. Yes, um, I'm not uh, really agreed with uh, the that when uh, with the the, the, the explanation of when you are inside, after it's easy to take pictures. I, I'm not sure that it's so easy. Y it's, it's it's easy to to have the um, the you know the, the regular program, you know exactly. But that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, Those yeah, pictures yeah, are yeah, very yeah, simple yeah, yeah, to yeah, take. Of course, of course. But um, but after it's it's just to to to, to try to to, to have a um, um, a work on the side, you know, uh, another vision or something more deep, more. More, more accurate. It's, it's this is the the beginning of the work, you know. And uh, I would like to just to, to have a just just uh very quickly. We have very to open quickly, up for the yeah, audience. Yeah, the, the, the um, why it's possible to 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 involve something different in North Korea is is because the the, the, the country is. I'm very fascinated, but also of course very afraid about the country. That the the fascination of the country is. Because uh, on, 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 on the symbolic of, of the country, you have the, the, the sickle, you have the armor, but you have also the brush. And the brush, it means that the, the country is the, 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 the scenography of the, of the power is, 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 um, is, is made with the help of the artist, artistic point of view, aesthetic of the, of the about architecture, about uh, about about propaganda, fresh, anything is on, on, on in shape with that. So, uh, when you're an artist, you 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 can to to, to try to, to, to do something, and especially for me, uh, since the beginning of my work, uh, my status and my position was: I am an artist. I'm not a journalist. I am not a photographer for, for, for news or anything. All right, thank you. With that, um, and apologies to Jim, we're running a little bit behind. So we're going to open it up to Q&A to the audience. I'll, I'll ask three things. Um, when, you, when you ask your questions, please identify yourself. Number two, please keep it short. And number three, make sure that it ends with a question mark. Uh, yes, right over here. Thank you. Um, my name is Bill Kolpak. I'm a senior at Carl Sandburg High School. And my question is, with the recent expansion of openness of photography in North Korea, do you think there will be changes with the way the world perceives North Korea? Thank you. That met all three of the criteria, by the way. Thank you. 
<laughs> shall, um, shall I get into that? Um, I don't know. Uh, obviously, I think we. I love photography. I'm a ph photography curator, but I uh, don't want to overestimate the power of photography. Um, I mean, an exhibition like this and a, and, a, and a panel like this obviously aims at, at kind of opening it up. Um, the media attention that the exhibition has gotten uh, is has been overwhelming, um, but it's interesting to see that it's always approached from the point of view the Hermit Kingdom, uh, the, uh, uh, views from North Korea that you otherwise wouldn't have seen. Whereas a lot of the things that we actually see coming out of the North Korea from from the show, the actual photographs are not that surprising. Uh, it's just the treatment and the context, and it's all this, um, uh, um, let's say, the artistic approach that, that, that the artists put into it, what makes them valuable and, and, and more understanding for, for us. Uh, I think it will, be, it will take a very long time um, for us to gain a truly better understanding of North Korea. Merely photography won't do it. Uh, more openness, I hope. Um, the, but what is the, the ultimate goal? Uh, of that openness, we would hope reform so that people get better lives. Can I jump in here real sure. quick? I think that there's a danger in um, in the misconception, like a misconstrued in, uh, interpretation of kind of what North Korea is becoming through a foreigner's photos. Because ultimately, uh, foreigners do not have uh, hundred like unfettered access uh, to take photos. And so, um, listening to and we can maybe talk about like defector uh, kind of different later, but listening to uh, these um, ordinary people who've escaped North Korea and their stories of their daily lives, not necessarily how they're pulled to watch executions or these kind of really awful things that do happen, but listening to their daily lives of how they held their mom's hands to go to the, these proliferating markets or um, watching movies while like under blankets and having all their windows covered. All those things are not covered in photography, and there's so many other realities inside North Korea that just simply cannot be captured by photography, um, especially more the political things, um, simply because that's that's not the image that the regime wants to relay to an international audience. So I think there is um, certain value, there certainly is a lot of value um, in more photos coming out. But I think that there we all, as viewers um, and as responsible viewers, uh, have to have that really critical kind of um, skepticism about the reality. I'll take the moderator's prerogative and, and jump in and add one one last point on that. Um, if you were in Washington, D.C. from maybe before 2009 or 2010, before that, and you were talking about North Korea, the only subject was denuclearization. There was no talk of human rights. Now, this is not to say that you know the opening up and the increase of images from North Korea you know, spurred the talk about human rights and got it to the table and got it included in the discussion, but those two things certainly happened together. Whether there was whether there were or not there was causation, I don't know. But the the increase of images and the fact that human rights is now on the table, they certainly uh, parallel each other nicely. Any other questions? Phil Levy, we'll turn to the Chicago Council down in front. Well, thank you. This is very interesting. I wanted to ask a question for Shir Um Suppose that you were allowed completely unfettered access now to North Korea. How would you approach that? What, and suggestions of what photos one might take, either. But what would your photos? And also, do you have in your mind the images that you wish you could have taken that you saw, but you just didn't think you could get away with it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Your, your question is about how uh, I can access in, inside the country. No, uh, no, no. no um, okay. Um, you know, the, 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 um, the when you you expect to do something, you have. Uh, for very special country, uh, for example, Mark uh, has a good knowledge of Nigeria. For for to, to for, for, for going inside uh, Nigeria, it's very special to to have to 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 get uh, access point. Uh, and generally, it's, it's two possibility: you are an artist, or you or you, you, you you are in connection with businessman. For me, it was a businessman, and uh, because uh, everywhere the business is. is alone, you know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is uh, when I s I start my my uh, a glimpse inside the country. This is a uh, your your I, I answer to your question. Well, I think I think he wants to know. You know, once you were in the country, if what? they let you go anywhere. 
Ah, oh, yeah. Where would uh, you go oh. and what would you? If they said there are no limits, no, you can do of course not. The, 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 this is the battle of every day, every second, every every, every second, every hour. It's, it's it's you know it's it's the it's the, the, the you are in, in your mind uh, <laughs> try to to uh, to enlarge the the possibility of uh, of the, the aura of the of the possible. It's 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 a uh, it's a fighting of any 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 moment, and but sometimes you can imagine that this qui this kind of request will be just not possible to just to to, to explain, and uh, you take your courage and you you explain and you say, uh, okay yes no problem, and uh, on the other hand sometimes you you uh, you consider that to to. Try to, to I don't know. Uh, I try to give you an example. Uh, for, for example, for, for, for with the, the, the after the, the ceremonies in 2012, they 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 are opening a new uh, museum of for, for the for the army, and uh, nobody was uh, inside with a camera before 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 uh, before the ceremonies, and. Uh, Arrive and ask to, to 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 if I, I it will be possible to, to take pictures, and I was sure that they say not, and they say yes. You know, it's yeah, it's very strange, very strange. Thank um, you. Um, so let's let's take a couple questions at a time. The, the gentleman in the blue shirt down here in front. There's a and a woman in in the back. First, the gentleman down here. Thank you. My name is Alan, and for Ms. Beck, what's what's the what's your filter or your your thought of South Korea's view of North Korea today, and maybe contemporaneously five years ago to today? Can you comment on that? Um, before that, we're going to take one more question in the back. Mine was mostly for uh, Gian. Um, how do you think you were treated differently as a both Korean speaker and Korean American? Uh, and you hinted at that a little bit. And why are you in no hurry to go back? <laughs> I'll do. I'll answer your question first. Uh, so I went with um, a bunch of. I organized a uh, self-organized a team of 23, 24 um, Harvard graduate students. And so automatically we were on high alert because um, not that we're extra smart or anything, but like we're going to be extra blabbermouth when we come back. And so we had many minders and all that. Um, and there were, I'll, I won't talk about the other Korean Americans on the trip. I actually just didn't speak any Korean, um, but I did. And I tried to hide it initially, and I failed miserably because their dunchi, their like ability to um, pick up on things that are not verbally said is amazing. Um, and so initially, it was very sensitive. Like they were, they, the minders knew a lot about me that I didn't have written anywhere. They knew where I went to high school, and they knew all the inside projects I did at Google. I, this is not like anywhere on the web, um, and so that got me nervous. And I followed all the rules very carefully. If they said don't go to the bathroom now, I did not go. If they if said like walk backwards, well, they didn't. But like I would have walked backwards. And so I wanted to be on my best behavior. Um, and but after we kind of got over that, like they knew that I wasn't there to attack anyone on the on the trip or. Um, wasn't there to embarrass or shame anyone in North Korea, there actually was um, like just as critical as they were of me in the beginning, it was, there was that much more affection shown towards me because they were able to speak to me in Korean and ask me a lot of questions about life in America that they, they just couldn't ask other people. Um, and there was this kind of unspoken trust that I, that, um, that I would kind of keep the questions private. None of the questions were sensitive, but it was questions about like, they said, we know what a French fry is, but what does that taste like? Or we know what McDonald's, um, or not that Whopper, um, Big Mac. <laughs> we know what Big Macs are, but what, what's in it? Like, there were a lot of questions about just American pop culture. But then 
after that, there were questions about my family, like my family's history, where do they come from? Um, are Koreans being discriminated against in America? Um, so there were a lot of questions like that. And I think there was this weird, te there was a tension between being extra critical of me because I can understand uh, the other Korean conversations taking place about us. Uh, at the same time, there was this kind of trust. Um, and why not? Uh, why will not go back anytime soon? So the book I'm writing now is about information access in North Korea and how that could potentially, um, just kind of what kind of effects that's having um, on the country. And that's stuff that I think they won't want me to expose. Um, and a lot of the work that I do with activists and, and defectors are fairly high profile defectors. And so um, North Korea publishes their assassination target list for um, defectors is all publicly available. Um, bizarre, but it's available and um, definitely uh, a very serious matter, and so and these people have had assassination target like made li threats made on their lives, very real threats made on their lives, um, and so I work with them, and it's kind of all available. So that's that's that. The more um, kind of it, but uh, the question about South Korea's view on North Korea and how it's changing. So as a Cor as an American citizen, I have a lot of biases and racism that when I approach South Korea's view on on North Korea. But I think that um, like any other country, there's so many differences because diversity in opinions so there's of course like a South Korean official stance and how that's evolving and then um, and then there's a huge population and variance in that generationally um, etc um, I think that in terms of my peers and like young people in general I think I think we all kind of hear stories about how South Korea is a very competitive very successful economy but that requires people to live very competitive lives individually and there's just no mind space to care for a lot of the human rights issues or like the soft issues happening in North Korea. I think that's changing. A lot of the um, kind of loud and passionate activists in South Korea are South Koreans themselves. And I think there is kind of a generational shift in how, how people are viewing North Korea, young people are viewing North Korea through what lenses. Um, I think there is an exasperation among the population. And of course, there, this is up for debate, an exasperation with just they're living with brothers and sisters, but they're constantly a threat politically, and they're 50 miles south of the uh, of the capital that's constantly threatening um, the existential ex like uh, existential threats with nukes. And so I think there's this mixed kind of feelings between um, brotherly love and exasperation that's re that really does, um, I think, penetrate a lot of the citizens' perspective on North Korea and the government. I think I'll refrain from speaking about the government. I'll, I'll actually jump now. in. So I, I lived in South Korea for a long time, and I recently moved back. And for the last five years I was there, I did public opinion polling. Um, we looked at South Korean you know, foreign affairs, uh, domestic politics, but also heavily looking at, at attitudes on North Korea. And, and Jian and I will have a little bit of a disagreement here, but in the data what comes out is that while the young people are more passionate, perhaps, about North Korea, it's not in the way that you think. They actually are much more hardline on North Korea. And if we ask questions like, you know, if, if how do you consider North Korea? Do you consider it to be, you know, they have this word in Korean, Uri, like one of us? Or do you consider it to be them a neighbor? Or do you consider them as an enemy? The young people, a plurality, about 25 to 30 percent, will cite North Korea as an enemy. And that's the lowest among, or that's the highest among all generations. And for, for the the idea that, that North Korea is is one of them, I mean they're they're the same blood. It's the weakest among among the youngest South Koreans. And so this idea that eventually Korea the Koreas have to reunify because the the two Koreas are of the same ethnicity, they're of one blood. That is really kind of fading away among the younger South Koreans because, as she said, they see them as a political rival, as a threat. And now with the, these ongoing provocations, the, the young South Koreans no longer want to put up with it. And so they're looking much more like the people in their 60s, where they don't want to give in to North Korea, and they are happy if the government takes a much harder line. Oh yeah, right down here in front, and then we'll take from this young woman over here on the right. Hi, uh, my name is Pierce. This is another question for, uh, for Jian. You mentioned the topic of your book is going to be about information, I guess in external information into North Korea and then also the pervasiveness of those black markets and as a means for information getting in. Kind of looking five years from now, do you see that, that external information leading to more globalization or a greater crackdown from the government? Hi, I'm 
Caitlin Meadows. I'm a grad student at UChicago in the sciences. And I was wondering if this duality of the public and the private uh, perspectives in Korea, like what the government wants you to see and what you guys see when you visit, penetrates into business interactions or in the scientific community, as well as in the personal lives of the citizens. Uh, I'm not sure who that second question is for, but uh, perhaps we can turn that to Philippe since he's made the most visits there. So, you know, on your visits there, have you seen these these growing perceptions? Are, are I think your question is, are the North Koreans themselves more aware of how they're presented externally, and have they reacted to that? I, I don't think I exactly understand the, the question of the the, the, the yeah. yeah can you can you repeat that one more time? Like maybe Mark, you have one. <laughs> this is on me. So when you go, I know that you photograph, yeah. and it, you've taken lots of photographs of the private side or what you were ah, allowed private. to see mm. of the Korean um, social s society. Um, but did that pennant, did you see that also in other aspects of their lives outside of the arts and what the government pushes, but like in business interactions in their personal lives, like what were the examples of the public mm. and private that these people have to deal with every day? Yeah, um, the border between the privacy and the public is is not so easy to uh, to see. You know, it's <laughs> it's uh, this is the same thing. You know, and uh, no, maybe you mean um, as you explained to you uh, with the, the special uh, special um, uh, exchange with the people uh, with uh, the what what is privacy about? Uh, about the kids, about this is in the in this in this uh, what is consideration. Uh, you 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 can to have some 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 good uh, talk with the people uh, close to you because they <laughs> they, they, they they are your your angel guards or, so or your guide I mean. and uh, at, at the difference of for example my my experience in in, in, um, in communist countries are from. East Germany, uh, where, 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 where the, 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 the curtain was really a uh, uh, separation for, for, for you, uh, between you and the others. In North Korea, you, you, you can have uh, uh, some, s sometimes some, some, some huge and some very unusual uh, uh, communication. It's the point of maybe of, of the context and uh, but yeah I'm very my, my position is to be very friendly with the people. Don't try to lie. Don't try to if they, they know they, they are no they are no so silly you know they, they, they most of them are very uh, aware and very uh, in uh, in mood with the Western countries sometimes. Um, I'm very surprised about that some very often. Mark, would you like to jump in here and talk about maybe from, from the, the exhibition overall, that kind of duality between the public and private? If you see anything you jump at? Yeah, I think it's, um, th th there's one example in the, uh, in the exhibition of the, the, the mourning that, that, that erupted wi uh, when, when I think it was from when Kim Jong-il uh, passed away, but also a similar thing happened when, when Kim Il-sung uh, died. This this public exposure of crying and and uh, where people were extremely sad when or appeared to be. Uh, I think the position that the photographer takes with with his project um, is that it was a show. There was a, almost a charade, kind of directed by the government um, uh, for the public eye. This is uh, the photographer's point of view. I am not so sure. I mean, again, I'm, I'm not a scholar on North Korea, uh, and I don't pretend to know North Korea or to understand it. I don't either. <laughs> but but it I was it has always been my impression that I think the 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 entire life, culturally, socially, uh, education, has is focused on uh, continuing the dynasty. Mm. Is focused on the keeping of the leadership. If you look at, at the art scene in general, there is true art in North Korea, not as we perceive it, 
because we perceive art as the expression of the individual mind. In North Korea, this has nothing to do with art, is not that. I mean, it's social realism, um, and it's about the representation of the goodness of the state, of the power, the strength of its leaders. It's technically amazing. I mean, they know how to make beautiful paintings, great statues. They export it to, to, to many countries, mainly in Africa. Uh, uh, you can see in Zimbabwe uh, statues of, of Mugabe, which are, I think it's actually the body of Kim Il-sung with Mugabe's head. But um, <laughs> don't quote me on that one. But th there is art. But it means that the entire um, society is geared towards, privately and publicly, towards the, the continuing of the state. So I think this, this, and this is where perhaps we Westerners truly cannot understand North Koreans. Again, I don't know, I mean, this is my personal feeling. Because the, if you've been infused with that for generations, if your entire life is about honoring the leadership as, as the caretakers of your life, personally and privately, when they pass away, I think you can truly be sad. When Lady Di passed away, uh, uh, maybe you, you remember this, but the outcry in, in the UK uh, uh, was almost similar to the outcry that happened in North Korea. It was not directed. It was a public. People were actually completely at loss and sad when their princess uh, uh, passed away. I think these are similarities um, that, that, that do exist. How does that work? Exactly, I don't know, but I think the private and the public are perceived in a completely different way in North Korea than the way we perceive them. All right, and Gian, do you want to take on the question about black markets and, and what you see coming five years down the road? Sure. I think this strikes at the heart of a lot of debates that are taking place about the value of information going in. Um, I will say that the hope in five years, five months, or wherever down the line, is globalization. And I think that's taking place at the individual level. If we talk about how um, technology and information is changing people's lives and their habits in order to become part of a global economy. Uh, I mean, obviously, North Korea, these small black markets are nowhere near part of a global economy, but they are becoming more informed of the outside world, that they're becoming more part of because of information coming in. If you listen to the radio programs that are being sent into North Korea, um, of, of course they're in Korean, but uh, if you have a friend who speaks it or if you speak it, listen to the type of programming that are going in. I was part of some of the programs that are broadcast in, and they're not, you know, usually they're not down with the regime or anything like that, because these are very proud people. This is their country that they're born in and they live in. Um, but it's like a lot of these programs are directed at young people. Um, if you want to make money, uh, would you want to create a chicken shop or a pizza shop? Um, which one makes more money? Where would you place it, rural or city? It's like business one-on-one skills. Um, a lot of these underground rail, uh, underground um, radio programs are doing these type of programs or um, or how to how to foster your dream and how to make your dreams materialize despite your social um, like the Songbun status that you have and so a lot of it is um, a lot of it isn't explicitly political but I think really useful for a lot of young people and um, different programs target different demographics uh, so the point the hope is to have more globalized um, but I think that the crackdowns are coming back. And so there's like highs and lows and highs and lows. A lot of people who I talk to say, when I see a public execution or hear about it, it doesn't make me not want to watch or not want to consume it. I just need to be more careful. Like they're, they're that interested in um, consuming foreign information because it's, it's helping their lives um, and th it's helping them live better, how to make money better off the black markets uh, and just knowing more about the world that they're they're living in, th and um, so I think that, I mean, who knows? I think that there is a parallel between globalization and crackdowns, but the government, I think we have to realize, is a really brilliant government, brilliant in the sense that they're able to s to meet their goals, which is regime survival, and they're, you know, they're aware that this is happening in there. Of course, they know better than we do. They know better than anybody, and so they're going to be, and have been, changing some of their um, state media to be a little bit more interesting. I mean, I don't know how interesting it could be, but uh, you hear more about these videos being a little bit more, uh, or music or videos being a little bit more, um, uh, I don't know what, in, I don't know how interesting it is, but they're changing it to try to kind of make it more appealing to younger audiences. Um, and 
Um, there are there are a lot of high officials who say things like, yes, med no media is coming in. But similar to how mosquito nets are placed, you're not going to put a uh, glass window in a hot day to prevent mosquitoes from coming out. You need the cool air to come in. Um, ultimately, the net will keep the like the monsters out. And so they have you know, they have and are coming up with more efficient, um, scary scarily efficient systems to kind of prevent a massive change. Um, so. So there, the counter effects are there, um, and the crackdowns will increase. But hopefully, that'll be hopefully um, kind of the good effects will, will override them. Uh, we're we're almost out of time. We have time for one more question. Uh, there in the back. My name is Heather. Um, I actually lived in South Korea for a couple of years, so I became very interested in North Korea. Um, but my question is back to photography, and I'm wondering. You know, we talk a lot about some of the photographers taking pictures. We talked a little bit about how the amateur photography is very controlled and kind of similar p images. Is there any activism at this point um, that's trying to encourage people to send more photographs out, um, either through defectors or through the smugglers that are taking, you know, videos in and out? Uh, I'm not sure who. I guess Gian, Mark, anyone can really. Um, not to my knowledge. So June, over to you. Sure. So there's um, NGOs who are doing this type of work, mes sending messages of love. So initially it started with letters. Americans can write letters and mail them to broadcast. But now they've kind of um, souped it up and uh, kind of made it more fancy. And you could uh, video record on your own cam your um, MacBook and using photo booths or your camera or whatever and send like one to two messages of whatever you want to say. Um, there are different themes, like send a message of love or introduce yourself and introduce like your world in one minute or something like that. And then these NGOs, um, or sometimes just a group of students in South Korea, will compile them and kind of edit them and then send them in um, and give them to other NGOs that then are in the business of sending USBs in. So these kind of curated uh, video collages that are essentially crowdsourced by young people around the world or in South Korea including South Korea, are just, pl are just included as one of the many movies that are being sent into North Korea. Oh, out from North Korea. There are lots of people encouraging them to send it back, but um, there are individual uh, journalists, inside, citizen journalists inside North Korea who send footage out. Um, it's, not really, it's not kind of like a large-scale enterprise by any means just because the risks are so high. Um, but there are citizen journalists inside North Korea who send materials out or go back and forth between China and, and North Korea to do that. But not at the scale that we would want it to be. Uh, Philippe, any, any final thoughts you have about one minute before I conclude? Well, no, uh, for, for conclusion or for what? Uh, what uh, about this uh, subject? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, or anything else. As, as <laughs> you're the artist, and yeah. we we'll give you one, uh, one minute to, to wrap up. Before sorry, I but uh, maybe... Uh, back for, for, for my, uh, my uh, own consideration. Uh, and uh, my, my next project for, for North Korea should be to, to, to try to organize uh, an exhibition of my work in Korea, inside the country. Because I think it would be uh, absolutely fantastic for, for the first time to the, the, the citizen um, uh, people of, of North Korea could should be at the possibility to uh, to discovering the the, the, uh, the vision and the point of view of foreigners, photographer, Western. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is on the way. Uh, but uh, it's not absolut absolutely sure. But uh, uh, the reason, the the the, the, the possibility to the, the of the exhibition is is is, is agreed. But the the possibility to 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 make a documentary about this experience is not is not absolutely uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'll go ahead and wrap up. I guess I'll leave you with with two thoughts. And th the first thought is that I think we all learned that we have something very in common with the North Koreans, and that's that we are not the only ones who are curious what is it actually in a Big Mac. The the <laughs> the, <laughs> the 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 second one is that I would really you know on, on a more serious note encourage you all to go down and and see the exhibit again sometime on your own time and spend a great amount of time looking at the photos and trying to understand, you know, especially when you see when you see Philippe's work of the these mass games. 
the, the energy that is expended in organizing them, how much money goes into organizing them, and the role that the people play in that. And you really have to question, you know, are these people who, who fully buy in or are, are they just playing their role? And uh, as you develop, you know, and you look through the rest of the photos, you know, it, it's really kind of sobering to think that that kind of thing is going on right now in this world. And for the most part, you know, not much is, is being done about it. Um, on that somewhat depressing note, let's, uh, let's turn to, to and thank our, our photographer, Liv Gian from Harvard, Mark, and the museum for hosting. Thank you.